That's because they're selling you lies. I cannot with this brand. Put this under your eyes and there you go. You saved yourself 435 bucks. Today, I woke up at 5 a.m. and I deeply regret it. <laughs> Today we are reacting to Alicia Keys Guide to Wellness Inspired Beauty. And for those who don't know, Alicia Keys really pioneered the no makeup trend, which was inspiring to me a few years ago, but there's also some issues when it comes to how society perceives beauty and women's interpretation of that. If you also didn't know, my name is Cassandra Bankson. I'm an expert and have been in the industry for over 10 years, but I've also had acne for 15, and that has taken a huge emotional toll on me, making me feel like I needed makeup, and that's why I appreciate Alicia Keys for standing up and saying, no you don't. I'm a medical esthetician, and although I've worked alongside and with both doctors and dermatologists, I am not a physician myself. That being said, I love analyzing, scrutinizing, and learning from other people's skincare routines. So let's see what this beautiful lady has to say to us today. What's going on? I'm Alicia, and I am going to take you through my daily skincare slash wellness. So we're about to get into it and have a beautiful, beautiful time just connecting in our bathroom. Cause like, where else do you connect with people but in the bathroom is the best place. Bathroom is the best place to connect, but I'm technically sitting on a floor trying to consume enough caffeine to keep my adenosine receptors happy and, and getting through the day. Yeah. I usually get up pretty early. My husband's usually a little bit mad cause I'm out of bed so early. He's like, where are you going? I swear to God, I did not plan that intro and this. We're just on the same wavelength. Wow. Wow, that's like telepathy right there. I might do a meditation, I might do an early workout, I might just sit in some silence. And once all of that's done, I come into my bathroom and I love candles. I'm a candle fanatic. Um, I like my candles. I love that she's touching on wellness. Again, everyone says you need to have great skincare in order to have great makeup. Well, you need to have great health and a wonderful, healthy body that you love and respect in order to even have good skin, because your body creates your skin, you know? Diet, sleep, exercise, meditation, stress levels, hormones, all play into how your skin functions. I'm so happy that she's bringing this up. And what's that? That's not a cat. That's an ad cat in a hat who is on cat crack. Today's video is in partial partnership with Skillshare, who believes in education and entertainment just the way I do. Skillshare is an online learning platform, and I consider them like a hybrid between YouTube and Netflix. It's as if they had a very creative, business savvy baby. They have courses on things such as business and entrepreneurship, as well as things like film and video and illustration, music and photography, which I dove into this month. There's a course by Rachel and Daniel all about DIY product photography, and they literally made a photo shoot out of a boot and a bowling ball that is museum worthy, as well as turning a boot into a flower vase. As someone who does product photography both on Instagram and on my own, I'm always looking to level up my skills, and for anyone who wants to make their Instagram page look that much better, or anyone who wants to photograph their products creatively, I would highly recommend watching this course. And although they use a DSLR in this tutorial, you can use a phone if you wanted to. It's a great way to learn or refine your skills, and if you actually check out my Instagram, you can see some of these practices in play. Because Skillshare believes in learning just the way I do, they've agreed to give a thousand people a free membership. If you'd like a free trial of Skillshare Premium, feel free to click that link in the bottom tab or use this code. And even if you're not one of the first a thousand people to click that, it's only $10 a month. And that is less than a questionable bag of kitty catnip. I highly recommend clicking that to see if you are one of the first 1,000, and this is also why turning on that notification bell is important, so that when we have more freebies or giveaways like these, whether it's products or services that our partners help us do, you'll be the first to know about it. So feel free to click that, pet a cat, and let's continue to react. My candle. And I believe in setting an intention. Let's say today I'm looking for clarity, I'm looking for peace. So I'll light that up and then I'll put it on the side. I also say an affirmation in the morning every single day. It's what helped me start to learn to love my acne and my scars and my skin. Affirmations helped me change my self-confidence in my life. More info here, but what she's saying, I cannot agree with enough. Then, if I've been sweating because I did my workout or if I did my meditation, you have to wash the face. My favorite thing to use right now is osmosis. My skin kind of requires a little bit more strength when cleansing. Right, so I get my little pump in as much as I want. I wet my hands, I lather it up, put it on my face, mm -hmm. it's all lathery and everything. And um, it's all about going up. 
on the skin and on the neck. I love her energy. There is also technique involved going up or down. It really depends on, again, if you're trying to get sweat and makeup out of your pores or if you're just regular cleansing. Whenever you want your products to penetrate, you go up. And when we look at this ingredients list to see if this osmosis cleanser is even something we want to have her penetrating into her skin, it has lavender oil in it, which again, might smell good. And if it enhances the state of her mental health, that is always a great thing. But overall, lavender oil is really not something that you need. It can be sensitizing. There were some studies done on mice showing that lavender and peppermint oils could potentially help them regrow hair that was shaved or cut off. Do with that what you will. When we look at this cleanser, there's not really anything interesting in here. Neem and kiwi and kumquat are exciting, but they're better if you eat them. Don't eat your cleanser. I'm talking about the actual fruit. <laughs> they're more beneficial if you eat them than if you put them on your face in this case. And then the peppermint oil, this is an essential oil that can be used medically. There is medical data to back it up. Usually it's for pain management, however. So this seems like just a feel-good cleanser that if she feels good while using it, I'm happy for her. But otherwise, it's, it's really not doing anything. Washed it off. Feels good. I feel refreshed. I've always cared about skincare, but in a way that was very frustrated because I, I didn't always have good skin. I've learned some of the secrets and I've also found some products that work for me, because everybody's different, you know, and you gotta keep trying and you gotta keep finding what's what's good for you, and it's cool. Sometimes it takes a minute. Like for me, it took quite a while. I cannot relate more. This is why I always say skincare is self-care, because makeup felt like a chore. She's spoken about that and even put lyrics into her music about that as well. She even said um, something about Maybelline something one time, that one time, yeah. I couldn't agree more. Again, with skincare, it's not like you whip out a fancy Chanel bronzer. Skincare is about you, it happens with you, and it's time for you and that reflection to either tear each other apart or to give each other compliments and be kind to one another and just take a moment to relax. And that's what skincare is for me, and I feel like that's why I've been able to come so far not only in my skin but in my self-confidence and how I treat myself because I have that moment of just reset every morning and every evening. Water. But for real, for me, I didn't really drink enough water and I didn't even think about water to be a part of my skincare regimen. I love everything she's talking about and she's only shown us one product. When it comes to water, especially in regards to acne, can it clear acne? Does a lack of water cause acne? We've actually filmed an entire video breaking it down right here. I actually love this a lot. Epicurin is one of my favorite brands. I was always fascinated that if you put probiotics on your face or your body, wherever you want, how good is that? So I love this mask, this aloe vera calming gel which is awesome as well. Like I said, I'm always looking for something to calm, calm it all down. <laughs> I squirt it in my hand as much or as little as you want, you know, right there, that's about how much I got. And then the mask, if you smell it, it's almost milky or something. It's very much of a powder. So you sprinkle it in there as much or as little as you want and you rub it together. This is like DIY done right. <laughs> um, it kind of has a little bit of a um, grainy texture, a little bit, and something about that feels good sometimes when you want to just, it's like an exfoliant, but not really, still a calming thing. So even though this mask is not technically meant to be an exfoliant, she is right. Because of those physical grains, it is acting like one because of the way she's rubbing it in. When it comes to the science of probiotics, you see we have a microbiome, basically bacteria that lives on our skin all the time, and that's healthy. When we run into problems, maybe with fungal infections or with acne, is when that balance of bacteria isn't balanced anymore. Same thing happens with yeast infections or other infections, and it is about balancing that good bacteria. When it comes to applying probiotics topically to the face, I am very very intrigued by the science behind this. I am not rushing out to spend my money on this right now because I think it should be tested more. I've actually been researching this for the past three years and I haven't really told people because that's a very, very long story. Part of it is a very sad story. Part of it is a story of transformation and growth and the other part of it is to be determined. But stay tuned and if that subscribe button is red, tickle it and turn it gray so that when we talk about this a little bit more, you'll be the first to know. Okay, dry it off, pat dry again. When we look at the ingredients, I'm actually really disappointed. I thought this was gonna be good. <laughs> this has milk fat, it has lactose, and it has whey, which 
all come from cows. The milk specifically is allowed to have pus in it. They artificially inseminate these cows and take the milk from them so that they can sell it to us. And when they make non-fat milk, they actually have to take out some of the fat and protein. And that's what the whey is. And it's technically a waste product and they put it back into this product. She says it smells milky. This is probably why. I don't see this as being beneficial. Now, once we go a little bit further, here is like the nugget of hope. It does say that we have Lactobacillus bulcaricus at 2 billion CFU. That is a decent amount. There isn't research showing that this specific strain is beneficial for the skin, but I'm not hating it. And then there is a super strain of Lactobacillus 51. This almost looks like something they patented or that they're trying to create marketing around. I'm actually very disappointed. I was very, very excited by this initially, and I'm still excited by the science behind it, but the execution of this product is a big no. Based on morals and ethics, I don't recommend it. Based on the product, I'm glad that it works for her. She seems to like it. I feel like you could go out and buy better things, potentially at a better price too. You see, probiotics, especially living ones, are expensive, but the reason that they're able to make this for such a cheap price, because $40 for this is cheap, is because they filled it with waste products, literally whey. Like, get yourself some whey protein powder, throw in a scoop of probiotic bacteria, and shove it on your face. It's basically what this is. I am disappointed. I love this a lot. It's called Sacred Rose Water. Mmm, smells amazing. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So basically, just spray your whole body. Take a shower in it. Like around a thousand times as much as you need it. Rose water is actually pretty great for the skin. This product specifically has rose water and rose oil. Please don't go using rose essential oil. Rose water is definitely better. It can actually have some antioxidant properties. It can be beneficial. It's definitely not a miracle in a bottle, but if you feel great while using it, again, skincare is self-care. It's about enjoying the time that you do those things and giving your skin a little help along the way. It really does open your heart. And don't we all need that? We just need to open your heart, open yourself, just be ready to receive all the good intentions. Does she host guided meditation or something? We all need it from her, like yesterday. <laughs> and I always like a good under eye something. So this one's really cool. And I like it especially because there's one for day and there's one for night. Who don't like, you know, just attention, things like that. I, I get into. I'm glad it makes her feel good, but under eye creams are overpriced moisturizers put into a tiny tube to get you to spend more money. And the fact that they have a day and a night, if the ingredients lists are the same, I'm gonna be pissed because that's all marketing. Let's go check the ingredients lists. $450, y'all. This better have a tiny leprechaun that jumps out of the bottle and comes and manually massages your under eye bags because this is ridiculous. I love her. I know she's got the money. And again, these reactions are nothing against the person themselves. It's against the routine. And oh my God, this product specifically, I can't. I can't. You've got to be kidding me. Come on, come on. Water, dimethicone, jojoba oil. Yes, they are lovely ingredients, but this is an overpriced moisturizer. Why are you charging people so much money for this? Okay, so they put some caffeine and lactic acid in there, but this is basically an overpriced moisturizer, and look, it's got mica, which makes it glittery, so it fakes you into believing that your under eye area is brighter, when really, you have applied an overpriced, glorified highlighter to your under eye area, and the second you wash that eye cream with mica off, all of the glittery things go away, and the luminous under eye that you thought you had goes away too. That's because they're selling you lies. I cannot with this brand. Thank God they have different ingredients for the night eye cream, because if they were selling the same thing in a different package, I would be so pissed. But it is very, very similar. The night cream is a little bit better. We do have a lot of oligopeptides, polypeptides. These are peptides that maybe, science is still determining, can go into the skin and boost your skin's natural production of collagen or elastin. We don't know that for sure though, and um, this is overpriced. You can get peptides from the Inky list for $15 in a moisturizer. Put this under your eyes, and there you go. You saved yourself 435 bucks. Paying attention to under the eye, right? You know, my mother said the other day, she never put anything under her eye for like 100 years. She's not 100, but whatever. So I get it, and I feel like let's start now to get all of these areas going well. Why? Just a little bit of cream. So this, it really smells quite good, and it's also a sunscreen. Well, for me, like I said, my skin is very, very, sensitive so i go very light very light because cream sometimes can be you know a little bit heavy 
When she says sensitive, I wonder if she means like redness and erythema, I wonder if she means dryness and like itching and peeling and flaking, or if she means breakouts because sensitive could mean different things for different people. I wish she would tell us more about her skin type and her skin history. Can we all like go leave comments underneath Vogue's video and be like, tell us your skin type. Exactly. That way we can fully analyze and make proper recommendations. <laughs> go ahead. No, please. Go. I'm waiting. I just left a comment. Go find mine. It's like a game of hide and seek on the internet. While you're there, leave your own too. I'm waiting. This one is amazing though. We love sunscreen. We like to make sure our face has sunscreen on it. It's so good for you. That is a skin-telligent woman right there. This sunscreen does have both chemical slash organic and physical slash mineral UV filters. I personally like the physical slash mineral ones because they're better for the environment and for my acne-prone skin. I'm glad it's working for her. Wouldn't be my first choice of sunscreen, but it's okay. Something else to note is that she used her sunscreen as a moisturizer. People sometimes get freaked out by this. When you look at a sunscreen, they're essentially a sun protection factor in a vehicle such as a moisturizer. And if you find a sunscreen with the right ingredients, Ingredients, it's totally fine to use your sunscreen as your moisturizer during the day. Again, turning and learning those ingredients, the third ingredient down is caprylic triglyceride. That is what's found in most moisturizers. So there you go. I also love that this has allantoin. It's a really great ingredient in skincare. It can be very soothing and there's some science to show that it could potentially help to support skin and your cellular processes. Obviously, it takes things like good exercise, good sleep, drinking water, and a good diet because what you put on your skin matters, but what you put into your body is what ends up turning into good skin. So I love that she's aware of that, love that she uses sunscreen, and this sunscreen isn't my favorite, but it's not the absolute worst. And I've also, you know, learned that certain things on the wellness side and on the intaking into your body side, um, I've, I've cut out dairy. And also, believe it or not, getting rid of the breads. Ugh. Let me tell you, I'm the first person. I am a bread-aholic. And then obviously the fried foods, the oil and all that in the skin is never really good. It's not necessarily the oils per se, but definitely the dairy that she's talking about. When I cut out dairy, my skin transformed. There's actually a video where I went through all of my acne updates and my acne diary video journals showing the before and after of me going vegan, basically meaning that I cut out dairy and animal products from my diet. It was unreal. My inflammation levels went down. I used to wake up and have like snot. I would huck a loogie every morning. I have not done that in five years or since whenever it was that I first went vegan. Unreal, both what it did to my skin and to my outlook and perspective on life. When it comes to the bread, I don't know why she's avoiding it. A lot of people are afraid of bread because of gluten. There is some science to that, but it's not what you think. There are also carbohydrates in bread. Those can actually be very healthy, depending on what else you're consuming them alongside with. When it comes to gluten, if you have celiac disease or if you are slightly gluten sensitive, you might not want to eat it, especially if you have thyroid issues because of the gluten molecule. It can interact with the hormones in your body in a specific way that for some people is negative. However, gluten itself is actually a protein, so it's very, very healthy for the people who can can tolerate it, and as long as your body doesn't create an attack against your own cells and tissues because of it. So again, this is why beauty is personalized. It's not one size fits all. But the fact that she's even addressing this stuff is making me so happy. I feel like we're soul sisters. Can I hug you? Can you just record a meditation and speak it into my ears every morning to start the day? Like, that's what we need right now. When it comes to this skincare routine, I definitely would like to see an overhaul of which products are being used, but when it comes to the technique and the philosophy behind it and the manner at which she approaches health and wellness. Oh my god, this is one of the most impressive Vogue Beauty Secrets videos that I've seen so far. That subscribe button should already be gray, but if it's still red, go ahead and smack it. And she also talks about hair care and a couple of other things in this video, so if you want to see the whole thing, please go check it out on Vogue. Leave a comment begging Vogue to ask her what kind of skin she has and what she means by sensitivity so that we can all figure it out. And if that like button isn't blue, make sure that you make it match the color of this dress, because who doesn't like the like button matching? C come on, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Always remember to be beautiful inside and out, and I can't wait to see you in either the next reaction video or in the comments underneath Alicia Keys' Vogue routine. <sighs> Love you guys. Bye.